Okay, so I'm going to be adding a remote control terminal for the VFD. That will allow me to mount a panel directly onto the lathe uh, to control it and then leave the VFD remoted to the top. Now, the instructions here are pretty comprehensive. So if you look in here, it gives you a full layout of how to do it. Now, you can, build, you can buy a ready-built one from them, from, from Lens themselves. Uh, it's going to cost you about 120 bucks. It's going to include the forward reverse run and stop switch. It's going to basically look like a clone of the panel that's on there now and have a digital display. But it's about 120 bucks. What I'm going to be showing you now cost me about 30 bucks, and um, I could probably have gotten it less if I did mail order stuff like DigiKey, but I just went to uh, You Do It Electronics over in uh, Newton Needham Line. Pretty cool place, and just picked up all the electronic components there. So. This is my terminal block in the machine, in the uh, VFD. So, one is going to go to a switch and come to four. Two, five, and six are going to go to uh, a 10K linear potentiometer. It's important that it's linear and not an audio uh, potentiometer or variable. You want linear. And then you can see here it says 13A, B, and C. Those are programmable inputs. And how we figure out what those are if we go a few pages over here input and output setups here you can see it says uh, parameter 121 is 13 a and here is a list of commands we're able to give it from 0 to 26 so we add this number into that parameter and that will tell us what we can do with it now a cool thing is in this book it actually has Actually, I think I might be on the next page. Common setups for remote panels. So there's three different kinds here. And this one here has a, uh, a toggle switch for stop and run and a toggle switch for forward and reverse. This one here has a push button for stop, a latching push button for uh, stop, and momentary push buttons for forward and reverse. And this one here has no start and stop switch toggle switch for run forward and a toggle switch for run reverse. Now if you look at these it tells you exactly what the parameters should be. So parameter 121 and 122 should be 11 and 12 respect respectively. So you go back here so 121 should be 11 which is start forward and 122 should be 12 which is start and reverse. So it tells you exactly what we're going to do. This one here is basically the one I'm going to use. I'm just going to add an extra toggle switch between 1 and 4 to kill power. So my setup is going to look like this. Okay, so off of 1 we're going to come to a push button. And let me, let me show you what we got here. This is it here. Uh, as Tom says, Mr. Bozo visited me when I made this up. My drill grabbed and kind of cracked the edge here and um, when it did that, I guess it moved my vise a little bit, and I didn't reset it, and I managed to drill that off-center. So I just got to get a new plate and remake this. Um, it's not a huge thing. It'll be functional for now, but, you know, that'll annoy me. So I'll just get a new plate after and make a, and pull these out and, and replace it. But for right now, I want to get this running. So one is going to come off and go to our latching push button on and off switch. The other side of that switch is going to feed the common side of our forward and reverse switch, so center off, forward, reverse. This is a um, double pole, double throw switch. You can get what get by with a single pole, double throw switch. This is just what they happen to have. The other side of those switches for forward goes to 13A, for reverse goes to 13B. Potentiometer, uh, two goes to one side, five goes to the middle wiper, and six goes to the other side. So that's how we're gonna do it. Now as far as wire goes, I have seven wire, I have seven wire, um, sprinkler wire. So basically this is thermostat wire. Uh, this is 18 gauge. Those terminals are rated for anywhere between 26 and, eight, 26 and 18 gauge, uh, 26 and 16 gauge rather. So this is 18 gauge solid wire. So we're just gonna solder these to the switches and then we were able to go right to the screw terminals. 
okay so you use thermostat wire anything like that the reason why I chose this instead of thermostat wire is a I actually had this lying around and um, B it has a black covering instead of a brown covering and it looks like a cable some of the thermostat wires the the sheeting on it is a, a is a lot thinner than this stuff here so uh, we're using this okay so I got all my connectors in place and these are soldered on so we're going red is coming down and going to the on off switch on one side of it off of that we're gonna become in white then from that white we're gonna be jumping over to the common terminal of my switch then we're gonna go this is forward here forward is brown blue is reverse then yellow is going you can see that these are little terminals they fit perfectly on the potentiometer. Yellow is going on the middle terminal there. Orange is going to one side and green is going to the other. Now we just take these. You can see I left me I left myself plenty of room. What I'm probably gonna do is just insulate these ones here because they're kind of fragile and they're gonna want to bend over. So I'll just insulate these and we'll get this all clamped together. Okay, so I have the terminal strip wired up and now we gotta program the parameters. So I'm gonna turn her on. Okay, we're going to go into the mode, P100, that's going to select our source for our controls, P100, and so we're going to select that. And it's set to zero, which is the local keypad, which is this, and we want our terminal strip. So terminal strip is one. Okay. Now we want to set our other parameters, our inputs, to what's according in that little diagram. So 121, uh, 121. is going to be 13 and 122 is going to be 14 and we can also set deceleration time, acceleration time uh, what I have it for right, set right now is six minute, uh, yeah, six minute, six second acceleration time. So it'll go from dead stop to uh, full speed on the motor in six seconds. And I have it to coast to stop when you hit the stop button. So now let's see if our remote works. I, okay, I realized that there was one more parameter um, that I needed to reprogram. And that is parameter 101 and we need to change it from zero to one that will allow the, it to read the potentiometer on the remote display, uh, the remote panel here. I remember 
reading through this and remembering I needed to do something else, but I couldn't remember what it was, but that's it. So now, our power's on. Everything's here. Now this is going to end up being mounted somewhere in this position here. And uh, I don't want to mount it yet until I get the rest of this stuff on just to make sure I'm not interfering with anything. But So here's my main button. So now this should be forward. Let me... Okay. Now, if I click this in the standard position, it should shut off. And then click it to the left and it should reverse. Now I could also shut it off with this red button. Either way. So we're good to go. I just got to get another box and uh, redo the cover plate. You know, like I said, I messed up the spacing there and kind of looks like crap. So uh, I'm going to get another box and just redo that. But we know uh, concept wise, we're good to go. And hopefully, I won't screw up a second time. Hopefully, I won't. And uh, that's it. So I know this project has been taking a long time. Uh, it's been taking longer than I thought it was going to be and longer than I wanted it to be, but, you know, it is what it is. But we're kind of heading into the home stretch here. There's only a few other things that need to be done, and we should start making chips on this. Um, I'm hoping within within this month, I'm hoping to get this 100%. So uh, don't hold me to that, though, because every time I say I'm going to do something, something comes up. But... We are heading into the home stretch and we're heading in the right direction. And hopefully we should actually be able to see this make some cuts. Alright, so thanks for watching and uh, see you guys on the next video.